one of the questions we're often asked at EU consent is you know, why do you need to have age verification when you're accessing a web flight? Aren't there other ways to keep children safe online? And the answer to that is, of course, yes, there are plenty of ways to keep children safe online. Fundamentally, one of the most important things you can do for your children is to educate them, to warn them about the dangers of the online world, and to suggest to them that if they see anything that worries them or disturbs them, that they should talk to an adult, their parent, a teacher, or somebody else they trust. But there are, of course, technical measures you can take, and these sort of work on a continuum from the user right the way up to the website they're trying to access. So if we start at the user level, uh, it might be possible to uh, put some software onto the device that the child is using, the equivalent of um, software you may have heard of like Net Nanny. And this is software that patrols the device to make sure that the child isn't accessing anything that is listed or is found through its in artificial intelligence to perhaps present some risk of harm to the child. The next level of up is at the, browser, at the browser level, where you could, for example, institute things like safe search, um, which is something that Google offers on its search. Then you've got the question of how do you access the internet? And at that point, you could ask your internet service provider to switch on parental controls or other measures to ensure that um, harmful content doesn't reach your household at all. And then beyond that, we're looking obviously at the platforms. Now, one of the challenges is that some of this technology does require some skill and some knowledge and awareness. And often parents don't know anything about these tools. In fact, we know from surveys that the UK regulator Ofcom has done that only 60% of parents use any kind of protection for their children online. And that might be something as simple as, sim as turning on safe search in Google. So if we're going to look after our children when they go online, we need to use a combination of all of these measures. And the one measure which is really missing at the moment is that platform level, the level that's implemented at the, at the site. And of course, it's only the websites themselves that can possibly know what is on their site and what might be harmful to children. And so which areas of their site they ought to protect so children can't stumble across them. And so with age verification, it's for the platforms to assess their content, determine what the level of risk is, and where appropriate, um, apply some form of age assurance. Now, age assurance is a term we give to a wide range of methods, um, ranging from estimates right up to very specific knowledge of the date of birth of a user. Um, and that allows you to apply these sort of age checks in a proportionate fashion, depending on the level of risk. So for some things like, I don't know, buying a, a knife online, you may wish to be absolutely 100% sure that the person buying is at least 18 years old and you know, they have had their 18th birthday. Whereas it may be that when you're just assessing the general level of risk of content, perhaps looking at a, a computer game, which might be slightly scary for younger children, then a softer form of age estimation might be possible, perhaps just asking the user to take a quick selfie and then using artificial intelligence to um, estimate with quite a good degree of accuracy, but never to the exact day, how old the child might be before they're allowed to access that content. So that's how age assurance can work, um, both in the home and on your router um, and at the level of the platform. Thank you.